A couple of months ago, I uploaded a solo guide for the new players of GTA Online. And that video has just hit 1 million views. That's amazing. I can't thank you guys enough. Thank you so much. But even though you guys loved it, I saw a lot of comments actually asking about a guide for the non-solo players. Yeah, <laughs> the guys that actually have friends. Crazy, right? And I saw those comments and I thought, surely there's been a million guides uploaded on that already. And after a quick YouTube search, I found that there hasn't been a proper GTA beginner guide uploaded in almost two years. And if you know anything about GTA Online, you'd know that there is new content added every couple of months. So making use of all of the new content added to GTA Online, I'm here to guide you step by step to becoming a multi-millionaire. And pretty much being able to buy anything you want to show off to your friends. So let's take you from being a dummy to actually having some money in GTA Online. As soon as you load into GTA Online, you'll have the option to complete the tutorial. And if you've never played GTA Online before, it's definitely a great thing to do. It'll take probably just under one hour, and it'll run you through the basic mechanics and the mission structure of GTA Online. A quick disclaimer as well, you may have bought the Criminal Enterprise Starter Pack version of GTA 5, and if you did, that's going to give you a big head start on the steps we're about to go through, but all of the steps still will apply. Once you've completed the tutorial, have a quick look at your map. Yeah, this map is crazy, and I'm not gonna lie, even I still get confused sometimes, but that's just between you and me, alright? One thing you'll notice pretty quickly is that GTA Online can be brutal to new players. So in the steps I'm gonna recommend, I'm gonna recommend ways that get you money really quickly, but also let you have a lot of fun instead of just being destroyed. Because some of the steps for solo players, I'm gonna be honest, they can be really grindy, difficult, and to be honest, pretty boring. So let's get stuck in. Your first goal is to reach $50,000. This is gonna allow you to become a VIP, and VIPs have a few cool benefits. But the best one is it allows you to start quick missions that pay a lot of money. So to reach $50,000, we're gonna take you to the casino, which is right here on your map. Once you walk in, you'll see the massive lucky wheel, and you can spin this wheel once per day and win some pretty cool prizes. So give the lucky wheel a spin and you might get, well, lucky. <laughs> Just a heads up as well, you might not actually be able to spin this wheel in certain countries because of your country's specific gambling laws. That kind of sucks, but if you didn't get to do it, that's alright. It's only a little bonus that might give you a bit of a head start. If you still haven't reached $50,000 yet, head over to the big S on your map. This is going to start a Simeon Repo Deluxe mission. These are quick missions that are some of the more fun starter missions in GTA Online, so finish a few of those until you reach that $50,000 mark. Now that you hit $50,000, you can register as a VIP through the game's interaction menu by holding down the touchpad on the PS4 and pressing the equivalent buttons on Xbox and PC. I'm sorry, I don't know what those are. I only play on PS4 at the moment, so if you want to roast me in the comments, go for it. Once you're set up, hit VIP work and start a headhunter or a sightseer mission. Headhunter is a quick mission that will set you out to kill different targets across the map. And Sightseer is going to set you out to collect three different packages. Keep rotating between these two missions until you reach just over $200,000 and we'll move on to the next step. If you don't want to do this on your own, of course you can invite your friends by clicking the higher bodyguards button and clicking on their name. Up until this point, you've most likely been homeless, so we're going to get you a place to live. So go ahead and buy the Alter Street apartment for $217,000. This apartment comes with a 10 car garage and because it's a high end apartment, it's going to allow you to host heists. So now you can start earning some serious money. You can host heists by walking into your heist planning room and setting one up and you're going to want to complete them all in order from top to bottom. After you complete all of the heists in order, not only will you receive the money for completing the heist themselves, but you'll also receive a first time completion bonus. Which for you, as the host of the heists, if you take 40% on all of those heists, you're gonna end up with over $2.5 million, which sets us up perfectly for the next step. Before you complete a heist though, it's probably in your best interest to head down to ammunition and grab some guns. So get geared up and give those heists a go. With all that money you've just made from the heists, your next step is to save the world. 
No, like, I'm serious. You're actually gonna save the world. <laughs> Our next step is to complete all three acts of the Doomsday Heists. These heists are a fantastic way to make money, and the heists end with, like I said, you saving the world, so it's a lot of fun. But unfortunately, it's not as simple as just starting a heist. You are gonna need to buy a facility. A facility is the place where you're going to set up these heists and store the vehicles used within them. Facilities are scattered all across the map and unless you're doing a certain glitch, <clears throat> it's probably not a good idea to just buy the cheapest one. The Doomsday Heists, like I said, have three individual heists and each of them have pretty long setup missions. So you don't want to be driving the vehicles you need for those missions all the way from the bottom to the top of the map every single mission. Because you're literally going to lose a few hours just from doing that alone. In my opinion, that's not worth it. If it is for you, then go ahead and buy the one at the top of the map. If I were you, I'd do myself a favor and buy one of the facilities closer to the bottom of the map. And once your facility is all set up, go ahead and complete all of the heists in order again, and you'll have enough money to move on to step three. With the Doomsday heists, Rockstar listened to a lot of the community feedback about the first heists. So instead of needing four players to complete these heists, you can complete them with anywhere between two to four players. What that means is you can do it with just two people and split the cut like 60-40% or 50-50% if you wanted, which means you're gonna end up getting a lot more money. In fact, if you as a host did it with four people and split it up 40, 20, 20, 20 as the percentages, you'd end up with $1.7 million. But if you did it with just two people and split it 60, 40%, you'd end up with about 2.5 million after completing them all in order. So after you complete all of the Doomsday Heists, we can move on to the next step. And the next step is actually the newest addition to GTA Online, the Diamond Casino Heist. For this heist, you'll need yet another property called an arcade. And again, there are several of them scattered around the map. I recommend getting one of the arcades in Los Santos itself instead of at the top of the map, again, because of how long it takes to drive up there. If you can't find the arcades on your map, all you need to do is head over to one of the big letter L's on your map, and this will put you in a cutscene with Lester. After you finish that cutscene, you'll be able to buy an arcade. All of the arcades in Los Santos are pretty good. You might want to buy the one that's closest to the casino. Obviously, if you're robbing the casino, that makes it a lot easier, but that's up to you. Head into the underground section of your arcade, and after you complete a setup mission, you can start the heist at the heist planning board. This heist was just added, and it's the most diverse heist in the game, and that's because you can actually choose three different ways to approach the heist. I recommend completing all of the setup missions before you do the heist and either do the silent and sneaky approach or the big con approach because, well, they're the easiest and they'll make you the most money. Once you get up to this step, if you want to know more about the arcade and how to complete the heist, I've made a couple guides on those, so definitely check those out if you need more info. Just like the Doomsday Heists, I recommend doing this heist with just two people instead of four. That way, of course, you'll earn more money. For our next step, we'll be buying a bunker. So to fund that one, play and complete this heist a few times on all of the different approaches. That way you'll receive another big first time bonus and that'll give us the money to fund our first business all right so you're probably sick of me talking about heists by now so let's take a little break before we move into the second part of the tutorial i want to let you guys know about two shark card giveaways we're doing to enter the first giveaway of course subscribe to this channel down below and follow the link in the pinned comment that'll take you to a website where you can sign up for that one it's pretty straightforward so go ahead and do that the second giveaway is taking place on our second channel called brizzy bros again that's going to be linked in that pinned comment below and on that channel we basically take Take a bit more of a light-hearted approach to the games we play. So go over there, subscribe, and if the giveaway is still up at the time you're watching this video, that will be linked in the pinned comment again of our latest video. Alright, let's get back to making money. So far, hopefully we've scratched your criminal itch in GTA, so now let's explore the more entrepreneurial side of GTA Online, if you want to call it that. We're gonna buy a business, and the first business you should buy is a bunker. In the bunker, your staff will create gun running shipments that you can sell for a fair bit of money. Using the money from the heist you completed, go ahead and buy the Chumash bunker on the left side of the map here. This location in particular gives you the best value for money. Once you've bought that one, head over there, go to your laptop and set the business up. Just a heads up, you will need to be a VIP, a CEO or an MC president in order to access your laptop. 
The bunker is mostly a passive business and it's one of the easiest businesses in the game to run. So here's how it works. On the bottom right side of your screen, you'll see three bars. Stock, research and supplies. Your bunker employees will use the supplies to create stock and to conduct research. In all honesty, research isn't really that necessary anymore, so I would head over to your laptop and switch all of your staff to manufacturing. This way, your staff will only use the supplies to create product for you to sell. With a bunker, basically, you just have two jobs. Restock the supplies and sell the product when it's produced. Easy. You have two ways to resupply your bunker's supply bar. The first is by stealing supplies, and the second is through buying them. It's much more time efficient to buy the supplies instead of stealing them, especially if you have bought the equipment and staff upgrades for your bunker. These two upgrades are gonna cost well over a million dollars combined, but it essentially doubles the output for your bunker. So keep grinding out your heists or VIP missions until you can fully upgrade your bunker. That way you're gonna make a lot more money in the long run. As your bunker staff continue to create product, you can do whatever you like. You can complete heists, roam the world, anything. This is all going to happen in the background as long as you're logged into GTA Online and have supplies ready for your staff to use. With all of the bunker upgrades, one full supply bar will translate into about $140,000 of stock. So just head to your laptop again and sell the product, but sell it to Los Santos. That way, as you can see, you'll earn 50% more money. Happy days. It's also important to note that if your stock bar goes over one quarter of the way full, it will spawn two cell vehicles instead of one. If you let your stock fill up all the way, it will spawn four. So be careful as to how high you let the bar rise before you sell it, unless of course you have friends to help you sell it with. Keep in mind as well that when you sell your product, other players are gonna try and blow you up. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. So be very careful when selling your product or just start a solo public session. If you wanna know how to do that, there's plenty of guides around, so definitely look those up before you sell. After we've upgraded our bunker, our next step is to buy some biker businesses, which pretty much operate the exact same way as your bunker. In order to buy these businesses, you'll need an MC clubhouse. So once you have the money, go ahead and buy the cheapest one right here for $200,000. This will allow you to become an MC president, which is required if you want to own the biker businesses. Once you've earned the money from your bunker and heist, go to your clubhouse and buy either a counterfeit cash factory, a cocaine lockup, or a meth lab. I recommend buying and upgrading a cocaine lockup first, earning money off that one as well as your bunker, then buying and upgrading a counterfeit cash factory, and finally buying and upgrading a meth lab. I'm recommending them in that order because basically, if you want to do it as fast as possible, you'll get your money back fastest by buying them in that order. If you want to know all the math behind that, check out my business guide. I went through all of the numbers for all of the businesses, so feel free to check that out. And I'm not going to deny it guys, this is going to take a pretty long time. But the good thing is, once you have all of these businesses and upgrade them, You'll have so many ways to make money that you won't even know what to do with it all. You would have noticed that I really didn't go too in depth on how to operate these businesses. And like I said before, that's just because they pretty much operate the exact same way as the bunker. So just repeat the same steps as you did with the bunker and get that money. The next and final step is to buy a nightclub. A nightclub is another relatively new business to GTA Online, and it makes use of all of your previous businesses to make you even more money. The nightclub, while you can earn money from the nightclub itself, is actually just a front for an underground warehouse. So here's how it works. As a nightclub owner, you can buy up to five technicians to work for you. Each of these technicians will independently go out and create product for you. As you can see here, this technician is assigned to South American imports. In other words, cocaine. In order for this technician to create cocaine for me to sell, I actually need to own a cocaine lockup separately. I know, super confusing, but at the same time, it's kind of cool. Pharmaceutical research corresponds to a meth lab. Cash creation, of course, is your counterfeit cash factory. Sporting goods is your bunker. Cargo and shipments is either a hangar business or a crate or vehicle warehouse, which we will get to in a second. Printing and copying is related to a document forgery office, which is probably the worst business in the game. And organic produce is related to your weed factory, which again, isn't a really great business to own in terms of money. So continue to work your way through, buy more technicians and earn more money. No need to resupply this business, your technicians are gonna do all the work for you. 
All you need to do is sell the product every few hours and let the money roll in. It's pretty simple. The final business I want to talk about is the vehicle warehouse. This business requires you to own a CEO office, which start at $1 million. And then on top of that, you have to buy a vehicle warehouse itself, which will cost at least $1.5 million. These are pretty good businesses. They'll earn you a fair bit of money, sure. The main concept is you go out, steal vehicles or cargo, and then sell them for a higher price. But the vehicle warehouse recently actually received a slight nerf, which reduces how much money you can make. And on top of that, those businesses require a lot of work and none of it is passive. So if you want one more extra way to make money at this point, go ahead and buy an office and a warehouse. They will make you money, but in my opinion, your time is better spent doing other things like heists, VIP missions, or selling your other business stock. So, uh, wow, you... <laughs> You've actually made it to the end. That was a hell of a lot to take in. And as you've noticed, and as I said a few times, this is gonna take a really long time, but if you're doing it with friends, for the most part, it should be pretty fun. So hopefully that sets you on your way, and those are, as long as it was, basically the fundamentals of GTA Online now. So I hope you learned a thing or two, and I hope that you can use those steps to make a lot of money, and if you think you're going to, let me know what you wanna buy first in the comments below. I love making these guides, but they do take a really long time to make, so if you've made it this far, a like would be greatly appreciated because that helps this video reach more people like you. And of course, consider subscribing for more GTA and sometimes other gaming related content as well. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hoi.